I would say before we did formal expert uh, programming, um, we had, I would say, a philosophical bent and understanding of primary care means we're thinking of the whole patient, the, the whole person, and all of the risk factors and all of the domains of health. And so I think it was there philosophically, but the reality is even with the luxury of 20 minute appointments and not having to bill, we tend to focus on what the student is there for and try to process that as quickly as possible. And so I think there was more attention to behavioral issues because of our population being students um, and it wasn't at all systematized and it mattered which provider you were seeing and so while we were kind of heading in that direction um, I, I think that ESPERT really created an opportunity for us to do that more regularly and incorporate that into every visit and so we started small and we did planning before we actually implemented um, and so we were able to work with the IT folks within the Center for Health and Wellbeing or the IT folks did this great work for us about using the paper expert screening tools um, and making them electronic so that when a student checks in they will automatically pop up the questionnaires and so it wasn't nurses taking time or front desk staff taking time it was the student fills that out on their own accord they're smart they're capable of doing that that automatically entered it into our electronic record so we didn't have to be doing scanning or other work that way it let the nurses look and see what the primary screening like the initial screening results were and then they could electronically launch any appropriate secondary screening so that was a new task for the nurses, but they had had some orientation to that from depression. We screen with the PHQ-2, and then if that's positive, we do the PHQ-9. And so with ESPERT, we screen with Audit C, and if somebody screens positive, then we do the full secondary screen, which is the Audit 10. The providers got specific training in motivational interviewing um, and how to do, deliver a brief intervention, um, not so much any of the more detailed things. Um, and then we did some practice, and I think the ESPERT grant folks were really super helpful for us in um, um, and doing like mm, I think of it as introduction and explanation and helping our staff get on board with it before we actually started the implementation so we had several meetings as well as trainings in advance and I think that helped set the stage for the staff to say this is important we agree with this we want to do this and we are a little bit afraid that it's gonna be hard and it's gonna to take too much time. Um, and we've done it before with depression and so here's how we do it. And so how do we just say, let's have a conversation about it. Let's not have a judgment about it. You know, and I know, this, this is not, it's not about knowledge. It's about how do we change behavior and how do we engage people in that way. And so I think that having the conversation is, it's just like opening the door to address those things and then having the motivational interviewing aspect of ESPERT um, is a more effective way to engage change. And so patients can answer these questions themselves. It doesn't require a staff to do that. It could be handing out a piece of paper. It could be automating it into your electronic record. It can just become part of the flow. And, and, and I think even after one semester, so four months time, we have um, pretty much defined this is how it goes now. Like this is what we do at Student Health for all regular visits. Espert works because it is um, uh, systematized, I would say. So though I wish everybody gets screened, historically, I would ask the people I was suspicious of high-risk drinking and not everybody and then that still is a kind of bias so I think the universality of screening helps eliminate the bias and helps make this be de facto this is part of health and this is what we do we've had students who've thanked us for screening to just say I don't I don't have an issue but I think my roommate does so I know that's great that that she'll get screened when she comes or it creates the opportunity to have a conversation or I wanted to talk about this and I didn't know how and so because you're doing this that allows me an entryway to do it we've had um, students that have already made positive change um, and those stories really carry a lot of weight and meaning with our staff who think like oh this does feel still like a little bit of extra work but when they see the impact that it can have even in 
individually one-on-one -on -one with a student um, I think that is just that speaks for itself in, in that kind of way about like what is the purpose of this work that we're doing